Hey. Hey. How's it going? How are you? Good. You got a cool background there. Thank you. <laughs> I can't remember like, you know, left is right and right is left. So like, <laughs> oh yeah. You had America on that side, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited and grateful that you are on the show and yeah, our first guest, our premier guest for the virtual season. We'll hear a little bit more about what you're up to and play some more improv comedy games. It's really just like a lot of improv comedy games and learning about Ear to All and anything else you want to talk about. Sounds good. Awesome. I would love to hear more about Ear to All and before we like just hear the the normal way of how someone might describe a company or a nonprofit organization. I thought it'd be kind of fun to see, considering Air to All starts with the letter A, if if you could describe Air to All alphabet style, meaning you explain it starting each word with the appropriate letter of the alphabet. For example, Air to All brings clever designs <laughs> and such and so forth. Okay. And you're, you're allowed one cheat word. So you're allowed one word that doesn't fit with the order of the alphabet. And let's just see how far you can go. All right. All right. Uh, um, so Air to All brings uh, clever designs uh, everywhere for uh, great uh, hospitals in, uh, let's see, uh, uh, that's as far as I got, I'm trying to think. That's great, that's great. That was further <laughs> than anyone else has gotten since <laughs> first person to play this game. <laughs> I want to hear a bit more about it and then I'll try explaining it with the alphabet game. All right, sounds good. Yeah, so we, uh, started in March with a, it was just a blog post that I wrote titled One Million Ventilators. And we were trying to figure out kind of how places other than America would get ventilators, right? So like the, the America can spend like billions and billions of dollars and print money and get ventilators, but other places like Africa can. Uh, and so if we found ways to design ventilators, respirators, compressed oxygen, that was, you know, two, four, 10 times cheaper than the existing models, uh, that would actually scale to the whole world. And so we're, we put together a bunch of volunteer engineers and designers and things to try to make that happen. Uh, and it's been six months. We've got two ventilators that we're designing, one respirator, and uh, potentially a project to bring compressed oxygen to Kenya. So that's wow. what we've done in the last six months. Wow. And this is all a volunteer effort from these Entirely people. volunteer effort. Almost all of us have never met each other in person. It's been like entirely Zoom. It was just people who answered my original blog post. Uh, the whole thing, like the entire process is people all over the world. It's been an amazing six months. Wow. And, and now are these ready? Are you, have you tested them? Like, are they ready to use now? So, yeah. So we've got 3D printed versions of the respirators and the ventilators. Now we have to take the next step, which is to go to like U.S. regulatory approval. We actually have to start the manufacturing process. And so we'll actually have to turn on first the respirator, turn on manufacturing, get, you know, 25 to 100 units like actually through an assembly line. And then that's what can be sent to regulatory. So that's the process right now. By the end of the year, that should be done. And then we're right now also looking at these other like projects where we can deliver either like things like compressed oxygen or things like, you know, special N95 masks or face shields, or if we could actually use the same community to organize fundraising, we're trying to do a virtual marathon this year, right? Things like that cool. to try to build some excitement. Wow, that's so awesome. I'm so impressed that people from all over saw this blog post and were just like, yes, like, of course, like I can help. And being able to make something like that happen in six months, there are people that have known each other for years working on the same team that haven't been able to accomplish as much in six months. Yeah, it's been exciting. And it's been so, it's so many new types of people too. Like, I, like, I don't have a medical device background. That's something that's really been sprinting. And so there's a whole group of people and doctors and respiratory therapists who are really diving into that corner, uh, all the way to like supply chain manufacturing, which is its own complete different game. And so it's also been like the sprint of learning at the same time where I just get to dive into so many different rabbit holes. That's so cool. Congratulations, that's amazing. And I, I'm curious if like, if you could wave a magic wand and just like have something that could support your effort here, what, what would that be? What would you ask for? 
I think a lot of money for the, to really scale up manufacturing. It's amazing that a lot of people told me that when I had this idea of like low cost medical devices, uh, it sounds almost like people said basically like get really rich first and then do this. Like it should be like a retirement project, right? And so what I would prefer, what I said is like, I just kind of, one, it's like 2020 and it needs to be done this year. So they can't wait. Uh, but if there was a way to fundamentally like raise money from communities in the same way that we built this organization to communities and, and find a way to say, you know, you don't have to be a billionaire to do philanthropy, but you know, large groups of people can do philanthropy too. Uh, and so that's the type of uh, system that I'm trying to think about how we can create. Yes, that's so true. I'm involved with the group Shocks Philanthropy that brings founders together that pledge equity, that commit equity. And then there's a, a portfolio approach. So there's 10 people in this pool. When one person exits, everyone gets to write a check. And so people, founders in particular, get to practice philanthropy over their careers because it's not like you wake up one day and you're 80 years old and you're rich and you know how to donate money. It, it's a practice. And that's awesome that you're, you're creating a way for people to engage in philanthropy earlier on and, and do so in, in a time where we need it so much and around something that's so important for our essential workers. And I, I take it this is like for hospitals or for people that are on the front lines. Yeah, so it's hospitals, it's frontline workers. We're also starting to look at uh, at nursing homes, right? So there's other places, dentist offices, clinics, different places where this will go. Uh, but it's just kind of a completely, in many cases, this used to be more of like an industrial factory type application. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now it's like there's a, many more people who need to be protected. And so it's the, the current systems aren't really built to have that scale up. The yeah. only way to do it is to spend really large amounts of money. Uh, which only kind of the U.S. and a few other countries can do. And so trying to find the solution for everyone else has been really motivating this year. Yeah, I saw on the website the price points, what, like $500? Yes. And so we, I mean, the U.S. bought ventilators for over $20,000 each, each this year. Yeah. And they bought hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. All right. So this is, the, this is where we get into uh, the danger of, uh, like, the rest of the world not being able to solve these problems with money. Right, and so if we can, maybe with a little bit less money, but a lot more kind of crowdsource engineering work and kind of design work, it, there might be a way to make things much cheaper. And so it's just ideally a way to do that for everything. Right, could you do that for medicines? Could you do that for education? Right, there's all these other places where mm -hmm. that's the model should work. Yeah, it's that's awesome. Well, I think I think I'm ready to take a stab at at explaining it with the alphabet. All right, go for it. All right. Um, Air to All brings cost-effective devices to, my cheat word, uh, essential, fantastic, good heroes, i.e. jeopardizing, killing medical nurses <laughs> or podiatrists, <laughs> <laughs> risking some time under ventilators mm, the, it's always where I get stuck without x-raying zebras <laughs> you got a lot further than I did uh, I, I'm not sure if that the last half of the alphabet made any <laughs> sense <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the bottom line sounds like you're changing the world with these affordable medical devices, uh, ventilators to help protect our frontline workers from this very deadly virus. That's the goal. That's amazing. And you're doing so with volunteers from around the world who have never met each other um, that are clearly geniuses um, working on this all together remotely. It's incredible. <laughs> It's amazing. I would love to meet all of these people. Like there needs to be like some like reunion in a year or two when we can all meet each other in person, right? And we have to all fly to one place. Oh my uh, gosh. So that would be that that kind of reunion will be really fun just to like meet people for the first time in person. I guess in theory, if you all had your devices, like couldn't you meet? You just like because you wear it, right? It's like Yeah, you wear it. Yeah. There yeah. you go. More That's incentive maybe. to get this out there faster. <laughs> I know. That'd be it would be a great like visual of seeing like the hundreds of people in these things all together. Yeah, it sounds a little bit more effective than a cloth mask or a bandana. 
Exactly. Right. And so, and for like people who are in like eight, 10, 12 hour settings too. 